Hello there! You know, around this time, everyone in Hollywood likes to come together and pat themselves on the back in quite possibly the most masturbatory ceremony ever created. And you know what? Let's get involved too. So let's begin with a big question. What are the Academy Awards? Well, in this special two-parter, I'm going to be going through the history of the Oscars. So let's go all the way back to 1927. This was a major year for Hollywood with the release of the jazz singer being the literal talk of the town. It was also when Louis B. Mayer founded the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences as a way to create an award show that would help inspire filmmakers to improve that work. Now, people had this idea that the winners were chosen by a committee in a boardroom. But for the first Academy Awards, that really was the case. Looking at the films released in 1927 and 1928, they chose the nominees and soon picked the winners. The first Best Picture winner was the aerial World War I film, Wings. But there was also a second category honoring the most artistic quality of production. The judges originally wanted the crowd to win that award, but Mayer hated the film and told the judges to give it to F.W. Manal's Sunrise. Other differences from the Oscars of the day were that the winners knew what had won beforehand and the ceremony was in a banquet and lasted only 15 minutes. It was actually such a non-event that it didn't even make the front page of Variety. The Oscar statuette itself was designed by art director Cedric Gibbons. The next year, they began playing the show on the radio, expanding its audience. Entering the 1930s, they honored the Broadway Melody, All Quiet on the Western Front, and Cimarron with the top award. In the year Grand Hotel took home Best Picture, Walt Disney won his first 26 Academy Awards, when he became the first recipient of the Best Animated Short category, and he was also given an honorary Oscar for creating Mickey Mouse. For the ceremony, he even produced an animated short honoring the nominees, which was also the first film worked on by legendary story man Joe Grant. The next year saw a major embarrassment of a popular director when Frank Capra lost to Frank Lloyd. But the presenter just shouted, Come and get it, Frank! Fortunately, Capra overcame that the next year when In Happen One Night won five major awards. Much to Claudette Colbert's surprise as she was boarding a train out of Los Angeles at the same time as the ceremony. In 1937, Mutiny on the Bounty won Best Picture in addition to the three Best Actor nominations. This led to the Academy creating categories for supporting actors the following year when The Great Ziegfeld was the big winner. 1938 was not only the year the life of Emil Zola won, but also the first time the ceremony was postponed due to a major flood in Los Angeles. The following year was a major year for the Academy Awards when the Grand Illusion became the first foreign language film to be nominated for Best Picture. The Academy also realized their mistake the previous year of ignoring Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, so they awarded Walt Disney a special Oscar and Seven Little Ones for the immense achievement of the film. I'm sure all the boys and girls in the whole world are going to be very happy when they find out the daddy of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Mickey Mouse, Ferdinand, and all the others, is going to get this beautiful statue. Isn't it great, Miss Annie? Aren't you proud of it, Mr. Disney? I am so proud, I think I'll bust. <laughs> Meanwhile, Spencer Trace became the first person to win Best Actor two years in a row, and Frank Capra, as you can't take it with you, won Best Picture. The 1940 ceremony was a big year for Gone with the Wind, with a massive blockbuster winning eight Oscars, as well as a special award for William Cameron Menzies' color cinematography. Haley McDaniel also became the first African American to take home an Oscar for supporting role in that film. This was also the first year that saw Bob Hope host the ceremony, which he would do a total of 18 times. A snafu occurred when the winners were leaked by the Los Angeles Times, so in 1941 they hired Price Waterhouse to count the ballots and seal the result in those iconic envelopes. By the way, Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca took home Best Picture, but not directing, the first of many times he would lose the Oscar. The 14th Academy Awards is pointed out as having the greatest injustice in Oscar history, when John Ford's How Green Was My Valley beat out Citizen Kane. However, like a lot of winners, you need to look at it in a historical context. Citizen Kane was hugely controversial at the time, with Randolph William Hearst still holding plenty of power in Hollywood. His hatred for the film's fictionalized account of his life was immense, and so, to not risk gaining his wrath, the Academy went for the safe, crowd-pleasing choice over Orson Welles' masterpiece. With the Second World War raging on, the documentary category was introduced. Also because of the war, the statues were changed from gold to plaster. Mrs. Maneuver swept the awards next year, and Greg Arson's Best Actress speech is the longest on record at eight minutes. In a funny incident, Irving Berlin presented the Best Song Award, which went to himself for his tune, White Christmas. This show was even immortalized in the classic Bugs Bunny cartoon, What's Cookin' Doc? 
1944, the show was moved to a theater, which has been the traditional venue ever since, and the beloved classic Casablanca won that year. When Going My Way won Best Picture, they also reduced the nominee slate to five in the top category, a tradition that would stick around for a very long time. After the Second World War, the Academy started a trend of honoring films with social importance, something which still continues on today in the Best Picture category. For the next couple of years, the top prize went to Billy Wilder's Story of Alcoholism, The Lost Weekend, William Wyler's film about returning veterans, The Best Years of Our Lives, and Ilya Kazan's Gentleman's Agreement, which surrounded the growing anti-Semitism prevalent in the United States. In fact, for The Best Years of Our Lives, Harold Russell not only won Best Supporting Actor for his role as a disabled soldier, but also took home a special award for being so inspiring to other war veterans. What many saw as British Invasion, Laurence Olivier's Hamlet won Best Picture at the 21st Academy Awards. And then entering the 1950s, the political drama All the King's Men became the big Oscar winner. While All About My Eve easily swept the 23rd Academy Awards, one of the biggest Oscar surprises came in the Best Actress category. Betty Davis and Gloria Swanson were seen as the easy frontrunners, but Julie Holiday swooped in and won for Born Yesterday, which shot everybody, with Davis being especially furious. An American Paris to go Best Picture the next year, but the real winner was A Streetcar Named Desire, becoming the first film to net three acting awards for the performances from Vivian Lee, Carl Malden, and Kim Hunter. Instead of giving Marlon Brando the Oscar, the Academy just gave Best Actor to Humphrey Bogart's role in The African Queen, which many felt was a makeup award for his past work. For the Oscars' 25th year milestone, the show was broadcast on television for the first time, and even then, it scored a high audience, ensuring it would air for many years to come. In a way, you can point this as the first time the motion picture and television industry worked together peacefully, despite the former looking not too fondly at this new technology. As for the best picture, it went to Cecil B. DeMille's The Greatest Show on Earth, widely considered one of the worst Oscar decisions of all time. The 1954 ceremony was a notable one for a couple of reasons. In addition to From Here to Eternity winning eight awards, Walt Disney won four Oscars in one night in the documentary and short film categories, a record that has not been beaten yet. A young, up-and-coming Audrey Hepburn also won the Best Actress Award for first leading role in Roman Holiday, and a star was instantly born. On the Waterfront also pulled in eight Oscars the following year, and then after that came a big surprise when Marty bagged Best Picture. The 1956 ceremony was also the first time an actor was nominated for home sleep when James Dean was honored for his role in the East of Eden, and he would earn a consecutive nomination for Giant. A couple of other interesting things happened at the Academy Awards. Dalton Trumbo, who was a blacklisted writer at the time, won, albeit under his pseudonym Robert Rich. The foreign film category was also introduced, with La Strada being the first winner, Ingrid Bergman would make her return to American screens and won Best Actress for Anastasia, and Around the World in 80 Days winning Best Picture continues Oscar's love affair with big spectacles. The Bridge in the River Kwai swept the awards next year, with its blacklisted writers also taking home Oscars, and so it had to be accepted by the French author of the book, for obvious reasons. For the 31st Oscars, the show actually finished 20 minutes ahead of schedule, so quite a rarity. Gigi Oaks became a rarity by winning all nine Oscars it was nominated for. However, most triumphantly, a Bugs Bunny cartoon finally won an Academy Award for 99 Bugs. Ben Hur took a record-breaking 11 Oscars the next year, and then Billy Wilder's The Apartment won Best Picture after that. That same year, Elizabeth Taylor won Best Actress for Butterfield 8, a role she absolutely despised. Did not stop her from accepting the award, though. The 1962 awards were overtaken by West Side Story, winning 10, including the first time for dual directors. Meanwhile, Sophia Loren became the first actor to win for a non-English role, and this was also the ceremony which started to become quite lengthy. Lawrence of Arabia, not surprisingly, swept the Oscars the following year, and Patty Duke also became the youngest actor to win the Academy Award. The biggest story of the evening was Joan Crawford accepting and Bancroft's Best Actress trophy, much annoyance of Betty Davis, who co-starred with Crawford in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Tom Jones won the 36 Academy Awards, which is, in my opinion, one of the absolutely worst films to win Best Picture. A big milestone also occurred when Sidney Poitier became the first African-American to win a Best Actor trophy for his role in Lilies in the Field. 1965 saw the Battle of the Julie Andrews musicals, as My Fair Lady, which replaced Andrew's safe role with Audrey Hepburn, competed against Mary Poppins. Hepburn was not nominated, and Andrews took home Best Actress. However, My Fair Lady still won Best Picture. Sound of Music did win the following year, though with Andrews losing to Julie Christie's role in Darling. There was also the first ceremony broadcasting color. Manfall Seasons and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf competed the next year, 
with the former winning. 1968 saw a strong batch of Best Picture nominees featuring Bonnie and Clyde, The Graduate, In the Heat of the Night, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and Dr. Doolittle? Seriously? Anyway, In the Heat of the Night was the big winner that evening. The show was also postponed because of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And when Alfred Hitchcock won the Irving Fallberg Award, he gave the shortest speech ever. Boy, if more Oscar winners were that brief, it would be a much shorter ceremony. The 41st Academy Awards was an interesting one. Catherine Hepburn and Barbara Streisand tied in the Best Actress category, shocking everybody. Stanley Kubrick won his only Oscar for the visual effects in 2001 A Space Odyssey, though it really should have been given to Douglas Trumbull. If ever there was a case of the changing times as a new generation of filmmakers entered the scene, it's how the Oscar for Best Picture went from the traditional musical of Oliver to the gritty X-rated drama of Midnight Cowboy. And so with that, we end part one of this lengthy history, though it's still shorter than the actual show. See you next time.